Certainly what's most important to keep in mind is that parents, in their best desire to help their children, need to avoid negative reinforcement. Don't do this. I told you not to do that. If you do this, you know what may happen. It's important for parents to realize that those kinds of approaches aren't particularly effective. Rather, a multidisciplinary approach, that is, the use of exercise, the use of diet, the use of behavior modification, to change children's behavior and have the whole family participate, are key elements in true success. There are a couple of programs that I'm aware of. One program at the Maimonides Medical Center, which I helped found, called the Kids Weight Down Program, and a program here at the St. Barnabas Medical Center Ambulatory Care Program called the Healthy Life Program. Both of these programs excel in that they offer multidisciplinary approaches to children who are overweight, whose families and children require this kind of approach. So what the approach would basically would encourage what physical activity, selective eating, what? I think it's important to start with an assessment of the family, to get a sense of the family dynamic and what they're capable of doing. Secondly, a careful analysis of the child's physical activities in the past and in the present are also important. And lastly, and, the, and perhaps the most important element, is an analysis of the current dietary intake. Once those three assessments are made and readiness for change is established, the family can start their journey towards re-engineering their lifestyle towards leading a healthier lifestyle, and all of those components must be addressed. Proper parenting skills, proper exercise, proper eating are all key elements in a successful lifestyle change. So the family that decides to keep certain foods out of the house has a better success rate than having all those candy and something around. Sometimes the kid just grabs that because it's there. Is that true? I think it's difficult for children to make choices when faced with the temptation of foods that have great appeal that they've been eating for a long time. And I certainly think that given the context that these children have grown up in, it's much better to remove the particularly problematic foods from the home. Now, of course, the major philosophy of our program and others is to moderate intake. That means not to completely exclude, but rather to minimize the amount of exposure to problematic foods. This, however, must be done within the context of appropriate behavioral support, otherwise it's likely to fail and the cycle of uh, negative reinforcement can continue. So a rapid weight loss is not ideal. A slow weight loss and changing lifestyle is ideal? A slow and steady weight loss associated with appropriate lifestyle change is the most ideal way to approach weight loss in some children. That may mean no weight loss at all, but rather continued linear growth, that is, to get taller and maintaining the same body weight. By definition, they will be getting lighter for their size. This, too, may be an appropriate goal to expect a child. Sometimes to kids go on a diet and they do really a good job, and they get periods where they just stagnate, they just don't lose weight. How can we get them through those kind of periods so they don't give up? Like most everything else that requires behavioral change, it's important to understand that there, were, there will be peaks and valleys in terms of how we succeed in maintaining this kind of lifestyle change. It's important not to allow negative feelings to prevent the child from remembering the successes that they've had in the past and look forward to the successes that they will have in the future. It can't be stressed enough that children will experience ebbs and flows in their success in approaching lifestyle change. And not to discard all the positive change they've made if they experience a, a, a period or an episode where they're not that successful.